Hello everyone, welcome to lecture number 7 of integration series. Now in today's lecture, I am going to take a KVPY, previous KVPY question. This question was asked in the year 2013. Now this question will be very, very, very important for you because in this lecture, I am going to take very important con concepts and I am going to explain it through this question. So this question is really important and fundamentally, this will be very good. So the question is, here the flower bracket is given as fractional part of x and the small bracket square bracket is given as greatest integer function of x so question is you have to find the value of the integration from 1 to n plus 1 fractional part of x whole raised to power gif of x whole divided by gif of x d of x so let's start now we have our integration from 1 to n plus 1 where this function is fractional part of x whole raised to power gif of x whole divided by gif of x now the first thing i observe here is since x is varying from 1 to n plus 1 here n is a positive integer so this function will be discontinuous many points so here I have to break the limit in such a way that this will become continuous so first of all the gif of x is making this function discontinuous and gif of x is discontinuous at many points now gif of x is discontinuous at many points that are the points are where this x is integer so I have to break the limits where x is integer so first thing I'll, I'll break this limits from 1 to 2 now since x is here, x is varying from 1 to 2, the value of gif of x will be fixed and the value of gif of x when x is varying from 1 to 2 is 1. So as it is, I'll put the value here. So integration will become 1 to 2, that is fraction part of x whole raised to power 1 upon 1, whole divided by d of x plus, now integration I'll break again where the limits are varying as integer because at integers, the greatest integer function is discontinuous. So from 2 to 3, now we'll get something. Now first, we'll get the value of gif of x. So when x is varying from 2 to 3, as I can observe here, gif of x will be a fixed value, that is 2. Now I'll put the value of gif of x here in the function, that is fractional part of x whole raised to power 2, that is gif of x whole divided by gif of x, that is 2, d of x. Now I'll do the same for different different integers and I'll move on up to n plus 1. So from 3 to 4, I'll get one more function, that is when x belongs to 3 to 4, we'll get a constant value of gif of x that is 3 now I'm going to put the value of gif of x here that is fractional part of x whole raised to power 3 whole divided by 3 d of x and I'll move on so on up to so forth up to n plus 1 so the last number will be second last number will be n to n plus 1 since n is an integer positive integer now here if x is varying from n to n plus 1 then gif of x again a constant value that will be equal to n now here we'll get this as fraction part of x whole raised to power of n upon n d of x. Now I'm going to solve this in the next slide. Now in the previous slide we have calculated the value of integration as integration from 1 to 2 fraction part of x plus so on and so forth up to integration of n to n plus 1 fraction part of x whole raised to power n upon n. As you can see all the upper limit and lower limits are integer and we have broken down the integration according to gif of x. Now here I'm going to explain a beautiful concept that is used in this question through an example. Suppose if someone asks you integration from 0 to 2 pi mod sin of x. Now since mod sin of x is changing its behavior where inside is 0. So sin of x is 0 on pi and 2 pi. So I'm going to break the limit from pi to 2 pi. So I'm going to break this into whole integration into two parts. Let's say 0 to pi mod sin of x d of x plus one more that is from pi to 2 pi mod sin of x. Now here mod sin of x is 0 at pi and as well as 2 pi. So we'll check through the graph. So let's me draw the graph of mod sin of x. So the normal graph of sin of x is something like this. And instead of going down, again it'll bounce because mod is there. So we'll get the graph something like this and the peaks are 1 because the maximum value of sin of x is 1. So here you'll get pi and here you'll get 2 pi. Let's say the area is divided into two parts. Let's say this is a1 and this is a2. This is a1 and this is a2. Now as you can see using symmetry, I can see that both areas are equal. That means a1 is equal to a2 here. Now we'll be calculating, if I calculate the integration from 0 to 2 pi, we'll be calculating a1 plus a2. Now here a2, I think a2 is equal to a1. As I can see, these two are equal using symmetry from the graph. But one more thing I observed here is since mod sine of x is periodic function, 
with the period t is equal to pi as you can see now if i calculate this integration here in the lower limit if i subtract pi and the upper limit if i subtract the same pi the period of the function then the integration will become 0 to pi mod sin of x d of x and that is equal to a1 so that's why these two are equal that means i've learned one thing here is in the lower limit and upper limit i can subtract any integer multiple of period of that function similarly i observed one thing here is this fraction part of x fractional part of x is again periodic with the period 1 that means in the lower limit and upper limit i can subtract 1 1 for all the integration so here i can subtract 2 the integer multiple of period and upper limit i have to subtract the same thing in order to get the same value similarly i'll do the same thing here i'll subtract 3 and 3 here in order to get the same integral because again the function will be repeating after some time the periodicity is equal to 1 now in the end i can here i can subtract n and again i can subtract n here so i'll write the final integration the integration will be this will remain as it is and again here i can do one more thing i can subtract one and one here so the lower limit will come zero upper limit will be one and fractional part of x plus integration now this will become zero and this will become one fractional part of x whole square divided by two plus the third integration will become zero to one so as you can see all the limits will be 0 to 1 and I'm keeping all the limits from 0 to 1 I'll tell you in the next slide and that is very important so I'll get this fractional part of x whole cube divided by 3 and so on so forth up to again the last limit will be lower limit will be 0 upper limit will be 1 and fractional part of x whole raised to power n upon n d of x now so from this point onwards I'm going to solve in the next slide So in the previous slide, I have calculated the integration value as 0 to 1 into fractional part of x, 0 to 1 again, fractional part of x, whole square divided by 2, and so on and so forth of. Since I have converted all the limits from 0 to 1, now I'll tell you the reason. That is the main reason is, see, when x is varying from 0 to 1, when x is varying from 0 to 1, our fractional part of x will become x. Because here I can write any num fractional part of x as x minus gif of x. And here gif of x from 1 to 1 to 0 to 1 will be 0 so that's why the fraction part of x will be equal to x so that is the main reason I have converted all the limits from 0 to 1 now I'll calculate the value since all the limits are from 0 to 1 I can all the limits I can add all the limits that is integration from 0 to 1 x plus x square by 2 plus x cube divided by 3 so on and so forth up to x raised to power n upon n now this will be very easy to calculate now I'll integrate all that is first one will be x square by 2 plus next is x cube divided by 2 into 3 plus x to power 4 divided by 3 into 4 and so on and so forth up to x to power of n plus 1 whole divided by n into n plus 1 now here the lower limit is 0 and upper limit is 1 now I'll put the upper limit here so I'll get this integration as 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 into 3 plus 1 by 3 into 4 and so on up to 1 upon n into n plus 1 minus when you put 0 all the terms are containing 0 x sorry x raised to power something so all become 0 so our final answer will be this now I can modify the sequence in the next page so as I got this as equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 into 3 plus 1 by 3 into 4 and so on up to 1 upon n into n plus 1 now if you check the first term t1 the first term is 1 into 1 upon 2 I can write half as 1 minus 1 by 2 again I'll get half similarly this is t2 so t2 I'm going to write this as uh, I can write this as 1 upon 2 into 3 as 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3 because LCM is 6 and again I'll get 3 minus 2 so again 1 by 6 I'll get Similarly, t3 I can write this as 1 upon 3 into 4. That is the third term. I can write this as 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4. And since it's a very common telescopic series, I'll write the nth term as 1 upon, that is n into n plus 1 as 1 upon n minus 1 upon n plus 1. Now, here you can see the sequential uh, conjugative cancellation will occur. That is minus half and plus half will go is gone minus 1 by 3 and plus 1 by 3 is gone and so on this pattern will follow 
and in the end we'll get this as the first of first and last of last that is 1 minus 1 upon n plus 1 so if you take the LCM you'll get this as n upon n plus 1 so this is our final answer and that is a good place to stop